Hi guys, it is April from Getting Hugo With It. I am here to do another round of my Con Marie with me. This is a whole little series that I'm doing where I am trying to declutter my bookshelves. I'm keeping the books that spark joy. I'm getting rid of the rest. Let's get into it. <music> purpose of this is to really cut back and declutter my shelves because they are double stacked. My shelves look a mess. So I'm trying to make them look better, um, which is not always easy. Uh, so essentially what I have to do is dwindle my bookcases, my bookshelves, I should say, down to 20 books. I can keep 20, but that's it. Um, I can also put two books on a limbo shelf. If I ever go over 20 books, then I have to go to the limbo shelf and ditch some books from there. It's not easy. So today I'm going through my Asian fiction books and I have to dwindle it down to 20. I've got 22, so this really shouldn't be hard. But the aim is to like really get rid of books. So let's see how far I can get. First up is The Good Earth by Pearl S. Buck. This is a classic book um, that takes place in China and it's pre-revolutionary China. I am going to get rid of this only because it is old. Can you see that yellowing? The cover is super slanted. I want to read this, but I want to read a nice copy. Like I think that if I read this, I would get allergies while I'm reading it. So goodbye to this. Next is The Piano Teacher. This takes place in Hong Kong. It follows a man, an English man, who moves to Hong Kong and he begins this like love affair with a woman, <clears throat> a woman there. And then 10 years later, we follow another woman who goes to Hong Kong and she's hired to uh, teach piano to their youngest daughter. And then she starts an affair of her own. I am not sure about this. I like that it's about people from England going to Hong Kong. The, most of the time Asian literature seems to happen the other way around and I think that this would be super interesting. Um, but I've never really been like inclined to pick it up so I'm going to put it on my limbo pile. Next up is Rue. I really want to keep this. It's a tiny, tiny little book um, and this is a Vietnamese book, I believe. It brings us from Saigon to a crowded camp and a Malaysian refugee camp, and then onward to a new beginning in Quebec. So it is, um, I think, Canadian literature. I wanna keep this because I think it's supposed to be really good. <clears throat> Next up is The Last Empress. I got this thinking that I was getting the first book in this series. I got the last book in this series. I'm gonna let it go because I don't have the first book. I don't even know if I would like it. So I'm gonna let it go. Ugh. Don't you hate it when you do that? Why Why didn't I look it up then? Ugh. Next up is The Courtesan and this is about a young girl who is sold by her father when she's seven years old. Um, she is sold to a brothel keeper. This might just destroy me. Um, I I think I'm gonna put this on my limbo pile. I'm curious about it because I loved Memoirs of a Geisha so much. This is very different because this is a brothel um, and she's a baby, uh, basically. Um, yeah, this just might kick my butt, so I'm not sure about it. Next is Snow Falling on Cedars. This I would really like to keep. This is about a man in 1954, a fisherman is found suspiciously drowned and all eyes point to this Japanese American man and he's charged with murder and this takes place um, during the actual court case, I think, and it sounds fascinating so I'm absolutely keeping this one. Next is The Tea Girl of Hummingbird Lane by Lisa C. I read one Lisa C before, Snow, Flower, and the Secret Fan, and I didn't like it. I now have all of Lisa C's books. Um, I need to stop doing this where I buy the author's entire collection and then realize I'm not sure how I feel about their writing. 
I do want to keep this because this is her latest and I've heard very good things about this. So I'm keeping it tentatively. <laughs> really hoping I'll like it. And this is about a woman um, who's quite young. She gives birth to a baby and her family, I believe, makes her give the baby up. So this could be a true heartbreaker. So I'm keeping it. Oh, Memoirs of a Geisha. You will never see me part with this. I freaking love this book so much. I really loved it. If you haven't read Memoirs of a Geisha and you just watched the film, oh my goodness. The book is 10 million times better than the film. Um, this is about a young girl who's sold by her parents. In particular, her dad. Her mom is very, very ill when she is sold uh, to become a geisha. And it's about her journey and it's heartbreaking and fascinating and she's resilient. You love this character. So yeah, I'm keeping it. Next is The Ghost Bride. This is very fascinating to me. This is about a woman who is um, married off to a dead man. Um, his family decides to kind of buy him a wife. I, I don't know how this works. I find it so fascinating. And this is a, an actual tradition. Um, and yeah, so she marries a man who is a ghost. Fascinating. I want to keep it because I just, I'm so curious. I'm so curious. Peony in Love is another Lisa C book and this is about a young girl who uh, goes to the theater one night and her parents are very like super strict where they think unmarried women shouldn't be seen. What? Anyway, she falls in love with a man that she sees there um, and it's, it's her story. It sounds like a very um, young and naive kind of character and I am curious about it so I'd like to keep it. Okay, the next two are like drama filled apparently. Other Lisa C books, China Dolls. This is about women who moved to San Francisco from China, I believe just after World War II and uh, just major drama that happens between these women. Now I believe the second in the series is Dreams of Joy. I would like to keep these both because I think these would be nice like fluffy reads to go through uh, maybe when I'm in a rut because it sounds like they're really fast paced. So I'd like to keep them. We've got an Amy Tan up next. This one is The Hundred Secret Senses. And this is about two sisters. I think they're half sisters. Um, they're very different people, but there is this bond. Now Amy Tan writes female relationships really amazingly well and she usually dives into mothers but this is sisters which is just as complex and fascinating so I'm definitely keeping this one. Do Not Say We Have Nothing is uh, a Canadian book. It's the Giller Prize winner um, and I'm keeping this. <laughs> this is about uh, a little girl who comes to stay with a Canadian family um, she has fled um, the aftermath of the Tiananmen massacre and she slowly opens up about her story to the people that she's staying with. I don't I don't think she's a little girl I think she's a young woman and we're um, following her um, living with a mother and her 10 year old daughter so in any case I am very eager to read this to watch her like slowly open up about what she experienced. I really love those storylines where people hold on to themselves so much for a while and then as they begin to trust the people around them, they open up. It's very much like Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine. I really loved watching that development and I think the same thing is gonna happen here. So I'm definitely keeping this. Bird Shadows is a book I'm gonna get rid of. It is YA. Um, it is about um, the aftermath of the the bomb um, at going off, uh, the nuclear bomb that went off and all the people that survived it. Um, I like the premise of it, but just knowing it's YA, I just think I need to part with this. Next is The Concubine's Daughter. This is a story about multiple generations of women. Um, 
we follow a woman who is raised by a concubine and everyone just thinks, oh, she's destined to become a concubine herself, but she decides that she would like to become a scholar instead. And it sounds like it is actually her daughter who like fulfills her dreams. And it just sounds really, really great. And it says a riveting saga of early 20th century China in the tradition of memoirs of a geisha. So that is encouraging. Next is Love and Other Consolation Prizes by Jamie Ford. Now I read Hotel on the Corner of Bitter and Sweet by him and I didn't like it, which is shocking. Uh, in any case, this is about uh, a young boy who goes to this fair and once he gets there, he finds out that he is a prize. Like he is going to be given away. Um, and I think a brothel owner um, wins him and he goes to stay with her. The worst thing about this book is it's based on a true story. I don't understand people and why people are so cruel to other people. That is awful. I really do want to read this even though I didn't love his first book. Shanghai Girls. I'm confused. I think Shanghai Girls is the first in the um, series and Dream Girls is the next and I was completely wrong about China Dolls. Anyway, another book by Lisa C. Um, I'm keeping it because I'm still curious about Lisa C. Like maybe that first book that I read by her just was a dud and the rest are going to be amazing. I love books about women coming together um, and drama between women and stuff. So I am hopeful. I'm keeping it. Songs of Willow Frost, I am getting rid of. This is also by Jamie Ford, but the storyline doesn't pull me in the same way as Love and Other Consolation Prizes. So I'm going to just pass this on. I'm going to just pass it on. Amy Tan's The Bone Setter's Daughter. I read this last year and I really enjoyed it in some ways and didn't love it in other ways. So I'm going to pass this on. This was not my favorite Amy Tan. Um, very well written, but just not my absolute favorite. So it's going to go. Saving Fish from Drowning, also by Amy Tan. I'm also going to let this one go because the storyline just doesn't pull me in as much as her others have. This follows a group of strangers who go on this like retreat thing together and their stories. Um, and I there's just something about it that just doesn't suck me in, so I'm gonna pass that on. And then last but not least is The Joy Luck Club by Amy Tan, which I read and loved, like I'm keeping this book. It's about four women who move from China to San Francisco, and it's about their four daughters. She just writes about mother-daughter relationships that are tense and misunderstood, essentially, in just such a gorgeous way. Um, and I just loved it, so I'm definitely keeping that. So this was good. I got rid of six books and I've got two for my limbo shelf. I am adding the piano teacher to my limbo shelf and also the courtesan to my limbo shelf. So I feel really good about this. I did a good little job here. Let me know in the comments below if there was a book in here that you were like, why would you get rid of that? You crazy, insane, woman let me know what that book was if there was anything or maybe you were like good for you for getting that getting rid of it and letting it go uh let me know in the comments below and i will talk with you soon okay bye guys